Hi everyone, it's Meredith with Soul Navigation and welcome back to my Sexy Seduction series. Today we're going to talk about Pisces and if you're looking for a really simple video on Pisces, how to seduce a Pisces, what's Pisces like in love or Pisces in Mars, you won't find it here. <laughs> um, Pisces is very complex and I like to go really, really deep. It's hard to understand this sign and um, doing Pisces work when you're not a Pisces, this is a great place to learn about it because it's daunting. It's hard. So if you have your Mars and Pisces, I'm talking about you specifically today, but you'll also get a lot out of this if your moon is in Pisces, your rising, your Venus, or your sun sign, or if you have a lot of planets, if you have your Mars in the 12th house, you really want to pay attention to this video. Um, and I also invite you to go watch my other two Pisces videos. I'm really uh, touched by all all the comments that I've received on my Pisces in my Pisces community and I just can't thank you Pisces enough you are the sweetest kindest people in the entire zodiac I think the Pisces community is just so beautiful so thank you for being here with me you make me realize the value of my work and I love sharing it with you so today we're talking about Pisces sexuality, how to seduce a Pisces, and I'm going to give you the top 10 tips, okay? <laughs> there's a lot more tips than 10 tips with Pisces. Some signs, I'm like, wow, there's three good things, <laughs> but with Pisces, there's like 25 things. So I had to choose, and I want your feedback because I trust you guys. So this is the hardest sign for people to understand because it's two things. It's ethereal and it's nebulous. Are you with me still? So I'm going to break those things down for you in real terms so you can like really get it. This is deep, beautiful, soulful, spiritual energy. It's not tangible like Taurus. Pisces rules everything you can't touch. So it rules hope, faith, love, spirituality, confidence. It rules anxiety and fear, depression, right? Emotions. Everything you can't touch will be found in the Pisces bucket. And Pisces is the space, the spatial relationship of infinity. So it is enormous love, enormous spirituality, enormous faith, enormous depression. You with me? So it's big. If you are in love with the Pisces. This video should be mandatory. <laughs> if you are a Pisces and somebody's in love with you, share this video with them before they start dating you, right? Just save yourself. Um, it should be mandatory for sure. I like to start with the aphrodisiac. Go with me. Okay, so, you know, for many signs, the aphrodisiac is just something real simple, like freedom, woo, you know, although that's not that simple. Pisces aphrodisiac is a little esoteric. So what I truly believe it is, though, is the ultimate attainment of leaving the material world, the body, in exchange for total divine connection and euphoria. Okay, basically, it's to escape, escape into the alternate universe, the thing they don't totally know how to describe, but they can feel it. Leaving the body is so critical for a Pisces. They do it all day long. They're in and out of their body all day long. I'd, I'd love to be a Pisces for a day. I'm not one, but I'd love to be one. By the way, remember, we're not doing sun sign astrology. This is how to seduce your Pisces. This is how to make your Pisces absolutely melt and stick with you. Pisces has a hard time doing one thing or one person forever. So how can you get your Pisces to be devoted to your soul, your heart, your mind, your body forever? How can you get a Pisces to commit? This is what I'm going to teach you how to swim with the fish. So seduction tip number one, empathy. Be a gentle soul. Even when you fight, if you can channel grace, you have won 75% of the Pisces relationship or desire or attraction. Don't be a wimp, but do bring empathy for all living creatures to the table. To get a chance with Pisces, you have to be caring. They really like it when you also have empathy for them. They didn't have simple lives. 
they are not simple people. They usually carry wounds, very deep wounds. And when you have empathy for those wounds, it makes them trust you and love you. You have to be a compassionate, kind, loving person to get a Pisces to be genuinely interested in you. And you need to lead with concern for others. You need to not be oblivious to the world around you where you only pay attention to your own needs. Um, Pisces cannot stand selfish people. Even though at times they can be a little self-focused, they do not like selfish behavior. They're generous with their energy and with their compassion. Pisces is revolted by the bully. They are revolted by the brute, the brazen brute who's just crass and gross and someone who picks on others or uh, picks on the less fortunate people in the world or someone who is just unnecessarily cruel or comes in with a mean-spirited attitude. I mean, that is just utterly revolting for a Pisces. They won't stick around for that. Mm -mm. If you are going to be a monster, <laughs> at least be a gentle one. If you're going to be, you know, macho or like really strong and alpha, at least be a pussycat as well, you know, because at, I'm not saying to only be a wimp, but you do have to be that strong person who leads with this compassion. Pisces likes a tough exterior. They like strength. They really do. But they like to see the sweeter side of a strong person. So they kind of love that contrast. Let them see your vulnerability. Let them see your wounds, if you will. Let them see your sufferings. Let them see your the, the sweetness that lives inside of your strength. Let them see you cry. Cry at the sad movies. Show them that you are a really good person to other people and they'll pretty much forgive you of all your wrongdoings that you are surely going to create in this relationship for them because it's just not possible to not create wrongdoings. Tip number two, be filled with soul. Discuss the world. Discuss the unanswerable questions about the greatest mysteries of life. Talk about tarot cards or astrology or the afterlife or the meaning of dreams or the meaning of life or the origins of the universe. Be filled, filled, filled to the brim with soulful questions, soulful music. Discuss the lyrics to your favorite songs and what they mean. Speak poetically and soulfully. You know, show them that you're filled with this cosmic kind of love. Seduction tip number three, lose yourself in kissing them. Kiss your Pisces like you are literally making love to them. Kiss them long and hard and just give yourself to them through kissing them. Bring them to their knees with this kiss. And I want you to devour them, drink them in to your soul merge so deeply that they feel you inside of them through this kiss. Do you get what I'm saying? Make them transcend the room, transcend time through this kiss. When you help them escape the here and now, you will have them literally melt into you like candle wax melting into each other, becoming one melted wax. That's what I want your kiss to be like with your Pisces. You will fuse them to you with this kiss. Make this kiss unforgettable. Trust me when I say your Pisces lover may be the best lover you've ever had. Now, I don't know from firsthand experience, but I can sink into, I can channel that Pisces energy and they will be your most sensual lover. How about if I say that? They don't necessarily do Virgo's mechanics, but they create a sensuality that is unforgettable. They will actually have you leave your body. They love seduction. They love kind of torturous, long 
seduction. So they're not a afraid of having sex take a long, long time because they like the art of it. Having sex, making love with an experienced Pisces is going to be magical, literally magical, beyond words. It goes beyond the pleasures of the body. It will be an overwhelming euphoria that passes through your body moves through the soul and ascends to the divine. And I'm not kidding. It's tantric. Now this kiss is going to lead to a lot of other stuff on the same day or a different day. Kind of would like it on a different day because <laughs> I want them to fantasize about you until the next time they can see you with that kiss. Mix the spiritual and the sensual into your lovemaking. Mix your really sweet, caring nature with the sexy, wicked side of yourself. Pisces can be kinks. They, I mean, do not be surprised if you walk in to your male Pisces lover and he's wearing your lingerie. <laughs> Pisces can just go every which way but loose. And by the way, my videos are for every combination of gender, of whatever, every kind of relationship that exists. So. Um, I don't just speak to heterosexual couples. Just wanted to be clear about that. Pisces also kind of likes it devious and they were kind of deviants and they don't have great boundaries. They live outside of the box. So they live outside of the box this way too. So bring your kink, find out what they really like and what their naughty side is and play to it because they like that. They don't want just the girl next door. They like the girl next door but she's got to she's got to bring her wicked side to the relationship. Seduction tip number 4. Create a total escape for them. You know, it's such a harsh world out there. Create a sacred love den to escape the harsh world and make it absolutely incredible. Roman bath and all. <laughs> Pisces needs a place where they can just literally escape the news, escape reality, escape their chores. They need a den. They either need a cave or a den because they like to hibernate. They're like bears that way. They could hibernate. If you haven't seen them in eight months, they're hibernating. So they need this sacred place and it should have drums and music and beautiful fabrics. And it, could, it doesn't have to be glamorous. It could be opulent, but it has to be deep and resonate with their soul, whatever that means. It's got to be creative and offbeat. And when you walk into the den, you lose the concept of all time. You leave your reality at the door. So you leave your chores and your checkbook and your iPhone and your clock, right? And you enter and you just have this sacred love den. Oh, create it together. Seduction tip number five. See the animal communicator in them. Okay, go with me for a minute. I want you, if you really want to seduce your Pisces, I want you to just <laughs> arrive with a box of kittens <laughs> or the most adorable puppy in the world arrive with an animal. Now, there's two parts to this. One, Pisces is actually the animal communicator. They, and I think it's because um, they have their sixth sense. They have their psychic power. And they also absolutely love animals. They love animals. They have to have animals. If you are a Pisces and you don't live with an animal, your heart probably aches. So because they love animals more than people even, believe it or not, because they love animals so much, they're very in touch with their spirits and their souls. And because they're psychic, um, they are so intuitive, they can read the minds of others, they can know the feelings of others. And animals are oftentimes very easy for them to relate because they have so much automatic, instantaneous compassion for an animal, um, especially wounded animals or hurt animals or rescues. And so I call them the animal communicators. If you really want to seduce your Pisces, 
bring over the cutest animal. And if you bring them an animal in need, oh my God, if you bring over the three-legged dog and you need help rehabilitating it, and could you build me a little, you know, a little fourth leg on a wheel for me, um, they will fall, they will fall so madly in love. They're going to want to see you tomorrow for sure. But they are a sucker for animals and they're, oh, a bleeding heart for a suffering animal. So, and I'm not saying to manipulate them. It's just know this about them because they love animals and they need animals. By the way, none of this is a game. Don't, don't make Pisces your prey because um, they are so sensitive and they are so gentle. So this is how to authentically seduce your Pisces. And I pray that this is really genuine, authentic, and real, and that you're not taking advantage and playing a game. Seduction tip number six, celebrate the hedonist in them. Spoil them absolutely rotten. These are the healers and the hedonists in the Zodiac. And they can be one or the other, but I find that most are both. So you have to melt these people like a chocolate bar in a pan on a warm stove, okay? That's the goal. So because they're givers, they're not as good at receiving, but they love receiving because the archetype that lives prominently in them is the hedonist. So spoil them with comfort and warmth and lead them into sex or a relationship or just dating by making things so comfortable. And then you move into making things so sensual and then it becomes sexual and then it's full blown passion. And in the heat you want to be passionate, but not barbaric. <laughs> Don't be barbaric. You want to smell good. You want to make them so warm and comfortable. Tap into their inner hedonist. You can ensconce them in a warm room. You could uh, lay them on a pile of cushy pillows. You could serve them all the feel goods. Just think of Bacchus, right? The god Bacchus. You could give them, serve them yummy drinks and chocolate and overdose them on all the good, yummy pleasures of your company. Bliss them out. <laughs> Melt them into you by blissing them out. If you guys don't know me, my name is Meredith and uh, my company is called Soul Navigation and I've been an evolutionary astrologer for 23 years. I can't even believe it. And if you want to scroll down below, you can get my love and relationships compatibility report. It is amazing. You will love it. And if you want to know about your Pisces lover or about your relationship, that is the report for you. You will love it. You'll see that I have a bunch of reports. And if you don't have your chart, I have one that is so inexpensive and it's gorgeous and it shows you where all your planets are so you can scroll down below and check out the notes and um, order a report if you want let's go on to the next seduction tip seduction tip number seven be romantic and create artful ambiance we just talked about that and again it doesn't have to be glamorous and you don't have to have a lot of money for a pisces um, and you don't have to buy the most expensive thing. This is not Taurus, and this is not Leo, and this is not Aries. Those are the ones that kind of like the really expensive things. But it does need to be, you, you, life with them needs to be deep and calming and artful and comfortable and probably a little dark. They like dim lighting and candlelights. Um, they like flattering lighting. They really are a sucker for romance. They love anything that says, I see you, I get you, I know you, I feel you. They like anything that digs for the um, mysteries of the world and of life. They love to have their own soul very quietly exposed or known. So when you give them a romantic gift, it has to expose a hidden piece 
of them that you can see. They will be so moved and so touched that you get them that deeply. They are very deep. And when you see sort of their secret side or their quiet side that just lurks right there and you put it into a beautiful gift of some sort, they will be moved to tears. That's love. And they don't have to have a gift. It could be an art form. It could be a song that you sing to them if you're a singer or a poem that you write or a letter. Tip number eight, while they like romantic, they also need you to be very erotic. Create a fantasy and be devilishly erotic. And they love total, they love to have permission to be totally self-indulgent and you really only need food, a drink, and some sex along with a soft-spoken fantasy whispered in their ear, you know, in a feel-good creature comfort and they will go into, directly into a liquid state. <laughs> So you have to be a little erotic with these people. I also want to say invest in the best, high quality, fabulous, even a little creative and gutsy shoes. They are a sucker for shoes. Tip number nine, let them hibernate without you. <laughs> that means hide, like blow away, go away. Like, why aren't they calling? They're hibernating. Let them recharge their batteries without you. You know, don't be offended by their withdrawal. Don't be offended that they actually have to recover from you. <laughs> and I am serious. Do not get your feelings hurt over that. They need time to repair and recover. They merge so deeply with other people's energy that if they don't come back out, and just go into themselves, they will lose themselves completely to another person. And when they do that, when they go too far and they've lost themselves, they don't even know where their own boundary is. You have to give them permission to step outside of your energy and they get to go be them. And because, as I was saying, they merge so deeply that they completely lose themselves in you. And when they've done that day after day after day after day after day, and they wake up and they realize that they no longer can find their own energy in their own body, they resent you for it. They created it. I know. I get it. They're the ones that merged. You didn't even want to merge, right? Hell no. You didn't want to merge with this Pisces. Uh, but you did. And they did. And now they're mad at you because they lost themselves in you. But you made it easy for them. So when you can know that they're merging too deeply, send them in a sweet way off to go recharge their batteries. They probably will just take a literal time out and probably even ghost you. Don't be offended. Do not chase them. Do not hunt them down and chase them. Unless you guys have had a fight and you really need to say sorry because you were, you know, brazen and crass and rude and mean spirited. <laughs> And my last sexy seduction tip, number 10, be uninhibited with your Pisces. They kind of like the soul that um, will tell all or reveal all, who will get vulnerable with them, who will merge deeply. They like um, inhibitions. They want to see all of you, have all of you, know all of you. That is if they like you. So do that, you know, with an invitation, of course, but be willing to be so open, so, so open with your wounds, with your hurts, with your growth, with your ambition, with your dreams, with your wishes, and be uninhibited, be an uninhibited uh, lover and lead. Be willing to lead because they can be kind of shy. They like you to create the first invitation or create the green light, I should say. They read cues really well. So you don't have to be an aggressive leader, but you have to be capable of giving them the green light. They can see inside of you. They can feel you. They can read your motives. 
They know when somebody's got good energy or bad energy, and they probably, <laughs> with their sixth sense, they have superpowers, with their sixth sense, they can read your thoughts and your mind before, before you even have them. I mean, they're crazy psychic like that. So when you meet a Pisces, I want you to know this person's doing a full <laughs> x-ray vision body scan of you. <laughs> Don't think they're not. They are. And they're doing it on a soulful and spiritual level too. But be uninhibited. Be an uninhibited lover be uninhibited in your zest or quest for life and living. Be generous with your time, love, money, and affection. You know, my littlest brother is a Pisces, and this is how I think of him. And I don't have too many Pisces in my life, but I have him, and I love him dearly. Uh, if he was down to his last $5, and I came to him, and I said, Hey, you know, do you have five bucks I can borrow? And let's say it was his last $5. He would say, Mayor, well, I have this $5, but do you think that, uh, would you be okay if you just took four so I could keep one? <laughs> That's what he would say to me. He would give me his last $5. He would give me the shirt off his back. So when I say uninhibited and an uninhibited lover, I kind of am talking about the generosity, the spirit of generosity. They love that. Now, if he would come to me, I'm not the Pisces, and he is the Pisces, and I know he would give me his last $5. He also kind of assumes, truthfully, I'm being really honest right now, uh, that I'm probably not gonna, you know. <laughs> I'm probably gonna be like, sorry, buddy, I only got $5, and I, I need it. And I'm not trying to be selfish, but Pisces' heart will melt. He also is my little brother, okay? Um, so you got to put that into the context, but Pisces is unassuming that you're going to give to them like they'll give to you. And that's sort of the angel in them. And I'm not saying that they're all angels. I know there's devils too, little devils you are, but that's their goodness. So the, I could also tell you more to that little example. If I told him, no, I, it's my last $5 and I need it. He probably assumed I would say that. And, uh, he also gets it. That's how cool it is. Like they go that deep. Like, okay, Mary, oh, my bad. You know, I'm sorry I even asked. Like, you, no, 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 you keep it. You keep it. You need it. It's okay. It's okay. I'll find my own way. He wouldn't even hold a grudge. He, he would actually understand and get it and feel bad for me that I only have $5 left when he has no dollars. That's the kind of inhibition that Pisces lives with. They open themselves up so wide like that. And so when they meet a kindred spirit who also lives like that, they, they just can't believe it. They're just shell-shocked. They just, they're, they feel like they are basking in the light of a divine soulmate. You don't speak necessarily the same language, English, Chinese, Japanese, whatever. You speak the same language here. That's how you truly seduce Pisces. You speak this language. Care enough about your Pisces that you are willing to do in the relationship more of the mundane work than them and be their pragmatic, practical, grounded, realistic helper and be reliable and be steady and be an anchor. All the hard stuff, like washing the dishes, <laughs> scrubbing the baseboards, <laughs> raking the leaves. They might like raking the leaves because then they can jump into the pile. But you know what I mean? With all the mundane ditch digging that you got to do in a relationship. And forgive them if they don't do the mundane world as well as you. They don't do tit for tat. So carry more of the mundane, pragmatic load. Don't make them feel bad that they're not. Let them off the hook a little bit that way. They're going to give you more in all of the things that you can't touch. When you do do the mundane, you can invite them into doing it with you, but make it so much fun. So make washing the dishes super fun. Don't be intense and boring about doing the chores. You know, do 
I don't know, karaoke uh, while you uh, vacuum, you know, make the mundane exciting. If you guys have to go get your tires rotated and your brakes fixed and your oil change, I am telling you, make it a Thelma and Louise <laughs> adventure over to the brake shop, right? Go get milkshakes. You have got to make life fun. They need an anchor. They need a good anchor, but don't be a bitchy anchor. <laughs> they hate that. They hate that. It Don't get on their nerves that way. It They will run so fast. So make life the boring parts. Make balancing your checkbook. Does anybody do that anymore? I don't think so. I just revealed my age. But make balancing the checkbook or... Um, okay, doing your taxes. How about that? Make it fun. Make it like a fun partnership for them. And I think that is their number one biggest need because they cannot stand doing the mundane. All right, you guys. Well, I hope you liked this video. Subscribe. I want to get to 10,000 subscribers. I'm so close. I'm almost there. Will you help me? Just hit the little subscribe button and you can find me on Instagram at soul underscore navigation and I do my astro dailies there. Now go check out my other Pisces videos if you haven't already. Bye for now. Bye.